The U.S. criminal justice system is in need of radical transformation. And so what we've done is isolate a really important component of that problem and are using technology to try to solve it. Our research tells us that the more contact one has with the incarcerated person, the less likely that person is to come back to prison. One of the most traumatic parts about being incarcerated is that you're isolated from society. You're cut off from new technologies, you're cut off from your families, you're cut off from your communities. Right now, prison phone calls are so expensive that a third of families of incarcerated people go into debt trying to stay in touch. So Zoe founded Emilio, an app that lets inmates and loved ones communicate for free. We're taking on two companies, Securus and Global Talent. These companies are basically earning billions of dollars by charging vulnerable people in our communities. Jack Dorsey, Vinod Kosla, and Eric Schmidt have all invested. But can a scrappy tech nonprofit take down the two companies that dominate the billion dollar prison communication space? These companies have created an artificial industry. If we succeed, an entire business model is undermined. This is a show about founders challenging the status quo. What, what terrifies you the most about leading this company? That's a good question. You know, my stress level has increased dramatically, um, and I don't sleep much. But what it's also done, it, it, it's really given me a lot of meaning. Zoe and his co-founder Gabe launched Emilio in early 2020 while they were still in school. When we first started Emilio, we wanted to make sure we were building something that was really serving a need. We wanted to make sure that the communities that we were trying to serve found value in the work. Zoe used his savings to hire their first software engineer to begin work on Emilio's first feature, Letters. Letters lets friends and family type and send letters to inmates through a phone app. It sounds simple, but it takes care of the logistical hurdles of finding inmate addresses and physical mailing. It was an instant hit in the App Store, and it was free. One thing we heard that really moved us was um, Richard Watkins, a uh, recently released uh, incarcerated person, and, and he said that the greatest sound that he would hear several times a week was a slide of a letter coming through his door. For him, you know, those letters coming from families were a ray of hope. For us, you know, that was an aha moment. It's both exhilarating and frightening to carry the weight of a startup on your shoulders being responsible for the livelihood of people who've really, you know, taken great risks to commit their lives to trying to improve uh, the conditions for um, some of the most overlooked people. We only had $12,000 in the bank. One of my biggest fears was, you know, what happens one day if, you know, 30,000 people download the app and just send a letter and we're completely bankrupt in a day? We had to figure out a way to get more funding to keep the ship afloat. Zoe decided their best bet for survival was to get the team started building their next feature called Connect. He picked up and moved to Des Moines, hoping to secure Connect's first real-world pilot with Iowa Correctional. Connect is a free video communication platform. It's going to reconnect incarcerated people with their family members, but also other vital resources like educational providers, mental health clinicians, and legal support. Hi, everyone. How you doing? Gabe, do you have any updates you want to kind of share with us about Connect? Next week, we have the big demo that we've been prepping for. We want to make sure that DOC feels good about the platform. Mark, maybe you want to show a quick demo so everyone knows how the app's looking like. OK, cool. Uh, so this is what the app looks like as of now, sort of dashboard stuff. As you can see, you should be able to go in and manage all your contacts and stuff, and hopefully join a call. But just things looking good for internal testing. That's awesome. Amazing. It's looking great, awesome. man. It's looking awesome. We like to think of Connect really as a technological bridge. Free video calling for inmates is unheard of. But with COVID limiting in-person visits, prisons were looking for a video calling solution to let families communicate. It was the perfect opportunity for Zoe to launch Connect. The pilot would be a high stakes proof of concept that could open doors to the funding Emilio needed. If one is really devoted to shrinking the size of the US criminal justice system, it's hard to both do that and also be profit motivated. As a nonprofit, we are committed to never charging families or incarcerated people. But convincing tech founders and venture capitalists to invest in a nonprofit is challenging. There's obviously no monetary return on investment for the folks who provide us donation. One of the most important things for me to do is to convince them about the impact. 
it was really stressful to figure out, you know, how are we gonna reach break even? I had some sleepless nights waking up thinking that, you know, it was all over. The pilot proved a success, paving the way for Zoe's plan to achieve break even by charging departments of corrections, local jails, and lawyers for access to Emilio's services. By November of 2021, Connect will be live in all nine of Iowa's prisons and will be launching for the first time in Colorado. There are a number of factors that make prison phone calls expensive, but Zoe's commitment to a new way of thinking about prison communications is disrupting the status quo. The North Star vision of Emilio is to make sure that every person with an incarcerated loved one can communicate with them completely free of charge and that incarcerated people can have access to vital resources that they need to succeed post-release. Moving to Connecticut as, you know, a nine-year-old kid with a really thick Nigerian accent, fitting in was, was really challenging. Basketball was the vehicle through which I became American. When I was around 12, after one of the tournaments uh, that we probably lost, we took this photo that's basically eight of my friends, uh, me and my basketball coach. And unfortunately, four of the kids in that photo have been incarcerated at some point. Regardless of what the worst thing is that you've done, you aren't worthless. I carry that photo around to kind of remind myself um, just about how fortunate I've been and the really important issues out there that need to be solved.